Good morning. This will be the second in a series of short messages about spiritual disciplines. I want to talk about simplicity. Um, and the ways that things that the Word of God says about simplicity have affected my life. Mark 6 8 says the following and commanded them that they can take nothing for their journey save a staff only no scrip no bread no money in their purse now this taken literally is very draconian very serious i believe it is talking about believers having a spirit a mindset of pilgrimness pilgrimage pilgrimness the idea that our home and our resources are in heaven um, and not upon this earth. The thing that they're told to take is a staff. Uh, this word rachabdas um, can mean a walking stick, can mean a discipline stick, can mean a shepherd's staff, which is both for guidance and for discipline and can mean a royal scepter, a scepter of ruling. I believe that this staff, therefore, is talking about the Word of God. That in your life it is a staff to lean on. It is a source of discipline for yourself. Um, sometimes needed to rebuke yourself and others. It, it is a shepherd's staff for guidance. And there's a royal scepter for declaring God's will upon circumstance. So the main thing we take with us is the word. The words that they are told not to take are interesting. The word script is a wallet. That refers to an empty wallet as if you're expecting to fill it with things. Um, I don't think this is saying not to own a wallet. Bread or artists refers in the King James to any kind of food. The expectation being something similar to the, the manna provision for the children of Israel as they wandered through the desert that our expectation is God is going to feed us on a day by day basis and so hoarding and so storing the things of this world is not useful. Money, in this case the word chakos refers to brass and would have referred to the kind of material that much money was made of at the time. We might equivalently say paper, but you're carrying it in paper. Sometimes paper refers to money. Sometimes it refers to something used to smoke things. Uh, but it's an equivalency to that. Are you carrying coins? Are you carrying bills? <sighs> Purse. Now that's a funny Jacobean term because it would have been something men or women carried at the time. Although generally that's a gender specific term in our time. For them, it would have been a hollow belt they could carry money in, which sounds kind of interesting. No one can pickpocket you if your money is inside your belt. Goes on to say, but be shod with sandals and not put on two coats, as if they were carrying a plurality of unnecessary things upon them. Be ready to walk, be ready to go. Um, Ephesians 6 talks about having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In a time where the sandal, in a time and region where the sandal was very normal, it was the shoe of the day. Um, most of the Bible takes place in the what we'd call the Middle East. And it's hot. And uh, the sand can be hot. It can have snakes in it. So you don't want to walk on it. So the sandal 
It refers to a state of readiness, though. If you take your shoes off, you are saying, I'm not going anywhere. Um, the sandal, of course, would have been a complicated thing with ties you know, wrapping around the leg and knotting it up, and it's not, I'd say, more time consuming than lacing and tying your shoes. Maybe more equivalent to boots that have a lot of loopholes and uh, take some time to tighten and then to tie. We live, I live in a capitalist system, a fairly plutocratic capitalist system, which has imperfections but also advantages. Me living simply means that it is more possible for me to give generously, uh, more possible for me to tithe, more possible for me to give of time, of resources, of money, less possible if I make it a goal to make as much money as possible and spend as much of it as I can on my perceived wants and needs. Capitalism does tell me I can buy what I want. It's my money. I'll do what I want. But capitalism will tell you. Uh, why would you tithe? It's your money. Well, you know, you're, you're giving terribly because you're a good person. Is what a pure capitalist would tell you. But the fact is, capitalism does mean I can make more. I can choose what I do with it and therefore give more than say in a society where there is no freedom of enterprise, no freedom of how you spend your money. I have been drawn to simplicity as a spiritual discipline. Um, I believe it enhances my ability to focus on the things of God. I believe it enhances my ability to have a clear mind for this. I'm going to tell you some of the ways that I've applied this, not to tell you what you should do, but to tell you the effects that it's had upon me. Um, I have no burden from God to tell you how you should be applying this, merely that I should, and I can tell others about it. Several years ago, I began becoming very interested in simplicity, specifically as not owning extra things, not owning things that represent an extra or a surplus. And I realize there's a, a potential psychological boost in knowing you've got more than enough, knowing that you've got a full pantry, knowing that you've got extras on shoes. Um, I was able to pare myself down to 30 total garments. And so, if you see a repetition in my wardrobe, those of you that know me or those of you that see this video, it doesn't have to do with a lack of laundry or me wearing dirty clothes. It has to do with a conviction about simplicity. That is, I've deliberately kept the number down. The number fluctuates when those that know me uh, don't quite get that I choose simplicity and think that I need more things. And so they give them to me and I politely receive and I sort of phase out older stuff or even give away things that people are giving me without telling them to someone who might benefit from it more. I have a micro fridge, I have a microwave, I have a guitar, which you've seen several times in songs on this channel. I have a laptop that you've never seen that is being used right now to communicate with you. I don't own anything that would not fit in my car. That's been a rule of, of life for me for 10 or 20 years. If it would not fit in my car, then my car is not gigantic. Um, I don't want it because it represents a real difficulty in moving when it's necessary to move, uh, being as mobile and as obedient as I can be. I can move all of my possessions from two to three loads in my own car, which creates a very pilgrim kind of lifestyle for me. A very much, don't have a lot of stuff, but I have a great deal of ability to move as the spirit leads. Um, 
to accept opportunities. Furthermore, it makes it easier to focus. I believe that the things you own occupy space in your mind, occupy space in your worryscape. I just made up the word worryscape, W-R-R-Y-S-C-A-P-E. Worryscape. Um, I believe that the more clear your worry space is, the more clear your capacity for focusing on the things of God is. So, that has been my application of simplicity in my life. Hope that it has blessed you, and that you are inspired to see what the spiritual discipline of simplicity can do for your walk with God, and your ability to be of service to others. In Jesus' name, please like and subscribe.